What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 3 of our EHM EA Let's Play here with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Hopefully you guys are good. If you missed last episode, go check it out. There's a link to the playlist for this series down in the description as always. You can keep up to date with all the videos there. But anyway, today we are literally picking things up from where I left off last time. I uploaded the video. I'd accidentally already kind of advanced to the game that we have to cover today, which is... It's a, it's a biggie. It's a biggie. Let's have a look at our schedule. So you can see it here. We're going to be taking on the Habs. It's a massive game against the Canadians. We want to win. Um, I didn't cover last episode, but just so you guys can see the exhibition games in our preseason. So we beat the Devils 5-1. We then followed things up by beating the Lightning 10-2. It was a bit of a blowout. We played pretty well in this game. Um, can, I, can I get the full details on the game? Maybe? 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 There we go. We found the link. <laughs> so you can see here, it was actually kind of close, but we really, really ran away with things. It was a really high scoring uh, first third to the game. You can see here, 5 3 in our favour in the first period. And then from there, we just pulled away a few power play points, which is always nice, but all in all, a really dominant game. The next result was against the Ducks, where we won 5 4 after overtime. And to wrap things up, we played the Oilers, where again, we won 5 2. So I'm a little bit worried that we had too good of a kind of pre-season and that's going to be the beginning of the end i didn't play any of like the youth prospects or trialists really i tried to play kind of a lineup that i'm going to be using this season but it seemed pretty good so i've not actually changed anything tactically since um those games we're pretty much going with the exact same setup going into this game against the habs of course this is a big derby it, it's it's a big derby for us we, we want to win we want to beat the montreal canadians but it's not going to be easy. Um, I wish I knew if there was a preseason kind of um, prediction thing here. But I, 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 as you guys know, I'm new to the game. I would not know where to find it if there was some kind of uh, pre-tournament schedule. But you can see here the season that we're involved in is an 82-game season starting on October the 8th. So starting today. And it ends in April on the same date. So we've got that to look forward to. And then, of course, the playoffs will follow after that. So anyway, let's just get into this game. This is going to be the first game I ever sit down and talk over live. Now, first things first, we have the dilemma of do we play with this view, which is the smaller rink view, where you guys can see all the stats below, but the gameplay is a little bit smaller. Mind you, if you watch in full screen, it should be fine. Or do I play with the zoom on, but with less stats for you guys to see? If you want to let me know which you would prefer, I kind of feel like the zoom off is going to be the way to go for now. But if you guys really struggle, I can change it. Uh, the puck doesn't actually increase in size with the zoom. So that's not really a swaying factor. And I kind of feel like in this view, I can analyze a bit more about what's going on. But anyway, for this game, I am going to play with the highlights on extended. I do normally play with them on key, but the issue with key highlights is that it kind of feels like every single highlight is a goal of some kind, which takes a little bit of the suspense perhaps out of it. So we'll play on extended. Depending on how long the first kind of period lasts, I might then change it to key. Um, but if you guys wanted to, again, let me know your suggestions. It kind of reminds me of the old key highlights in Football Manager, whereby... Um, Basically, every highlight is a goal or, you know, a it's a goal either way and it gets a little bit boring and predictable. That's one thing I'd like to see changed as soon as possible, really, with this, because I feel like extended is perhaps a little bit too long in some games. Anyway, that's just my personal opinion. Other stuff here, just so you guys who have never seen this match screen can see. So you have your, your box score, which is just a, an update. Uh, your shot chart shows where you've been shooting from and where they've been landing. You can switch it for different players and teams. Play-by-play -play is just... You know what's happening in the game ratings obvious home stats away stats other scores in the league we can change our own tactics here on the home tactics screen and then if we go to the away tactics screen we can see uh, what the canadians are going to be doing so i honestly am not as you guys will probably expect that familiar with uh, these teams at all but we can have a quick look at some of their players so um we'll take a look at their front line so they've got thomas um Plekanec, I guess that is, the Czech Republic 31-year-old, bit of a beast. Uh, he's going to be playing as their centre. They then have, um, I guess, Passiretti. Uh, again, 
answers on a postcard with these names. Oh, I've said that too many times. <laughs> but Max here, we'll call, you, we'll call you Max. Looks cut okay, pretty solid player. And then they have uh, Perintal, I guess, um, who doesn't look too bad, but he's not great. So I, I'm going to back ourselves here in this local derby. Let's get game view on, let's drop the puck, and hopefully come away with a first win to start the season. So I have linked a video down in the description for you guys who have come via Football Manager. So if you're really unfamiliar with the um, sport as a whole, I recommend watching that. I'm actually going to slow down the highlights just a bit so we can keep track of exactly what's going on. Um, oh, we scored. Kadri. Take a bow. And that's in the power play, which is really good. I don't know if it's just me, but in the uh, EMH kind of current build or... Uh, EHM even. I don't know why I want to say EMH all the time. <laughs> Basically, this current build of the game, it feels like power plays aren't that effective. Maybe that's just me. Um, I don't really know what the real-life conversion rates are like, but I expected them to be higher. We're on the attack again. Can we get away a shot? We can. Phil Kessel scores. 2-0. What are we doing? I definitely put extended highlights on, didn't I? I didn't. Right, let's get the extended highlights on for this second period now. But you, I think that's case in point proven about the fact that um, key highlights only show goals. But Canadians on the attack here. We get it away. But Prust with the rebound. Not good. Not good. The left forward for them. So you can see here our current lineup that's playing. And you can see their lineup. It's kind of obvious, I think. But the goalkeeper is the bottom of the pyramid or the triangle. You then have your defensive backs and then left forward, centre, right winger. You get the idea. But 2 1 here. Face off going to be happening in our defensive third. Who's this going to be taking? It's going to be Cozen for us who are looking to win it against Ella. Fortune Canadians come away with it. Save though made by Brenier. And we live to fight another day here. Now we're on the attack. Can we work some magic? Can we do it? No. No is the answer. Face off coming. Was that offside? I don't think it was. I wasn't paying that much attention. It's, it's difficult to keep track of at first this. I feel like even in 2D... Or even if you're familiar with the sport, watching in 2D, I'm, you can probably miss what certain stuff's given for. It does have written kind of what's happening text kind of stuff here, but it's really not that obvious. But I'll tell you what is obvious. Komarov lights the lamp. I'm just going to nick the phrases from here so I sound like I know what I'm talking about. Four seconds before the buzzer. Just making up a term. That's basketball, is it not? Might be relevant for this. Who knows? But anyway, two goals to the good. We're 3-1 up. Um, going into this, the second period, uh, but the Canadians are on a power play. Does that mean we scored during the power play? I don't think we did. I wasn't paying too much attention. Anyway, hopefully we can do something here. Um, a chance, but saved away. So a few players to keep an eye out on. Number four, Fowler, the new signing. Uh, Fano, uh, Fanuf. Fanuf, it is Fanuf, uh, is number three, so you can see our left and right defenders there. Our first choice, and then we've got Rhymes, Dyke, Bazak, and Kessel right now. So this is our strongest line coming up, so maybe familiar familiarise yourself with these numbers so you can keep track of who's who on the ice. Uh, I will play at the final period in the zoom to view, but again, if you guys want to let me know which you'd prefer, you can see looking at the stats here, we're having a lot more shots. I assume shots blocked is the amount of shots that they block of our shots rather than it being kind of in football you'd have shots on target shots off target this is a case of this is the number of shots we've had and this is the number that have been blocked anyway we're doing quite well here i'm kind of happy looking at it um we've got we've made use of one out of four power plays that we've had but we have also killed the one penalty that we gave away successfully which is really good looking at it they've given the ball away three times uh Hits. We've got a few more hits in this rivalry, although the Canadians on the break here. We need a big save, please. What a stop. The rebound. That didn't go in. It didn't go in. What a save by Bernier. What a man. There's a bit of a fight going on against the glass, but they get the ball again, the Canadians. We cannot get it out at the moment, and that is a long effort from Gallagher. Shoots it from deep. And Bernier cannot make the save that time. Looking at it, board plays one. We're winning uh, just over half of the board kind of scuffles. I, guess. I assume board plays is 
behind both goals, and it's basically who comes away with it when it goes behind the goal. Face-offs are 50-50, passes completed 81%. We're finding our targets quite a lot, which is good. But anyway, only the one goal in it now. We're halfway through this game um, during this, the second period coming up to the 10-minute mark. And that is a long, ambitious effort. But Price, the number 31 between the sticks for the Canadians, stops it. I'm thinking, actually, with this, I might switch between extended and key highlights for different periods. So it might be a case if I always do the first period on key. Oh, and Rhymesdyke! Puts the biscuit in the basket. I love that phrase. If you've got any alternative phrases for getting the puck into the goal, please give me them on a postcard. Or or you could send them by pigeon mail, or you could send me a DVD with various recorded on. But anyway, uh, let's see how we get on here. Seven minutes left, and what was that called? I don't know. Oh, hooking. I assume hooking or well, tripping is when you trip someone with your stick, so I assume hooking is to do with hooking someone with a stick, maybe hooking the other person's stick. We're learning as we go. Anyway, we are on the attack here. Number 21, who is that? That's a Rhymes, Rhymes Dyke behind the goal, but cannot find a pass, and in the end, Price gets it, but we will get the face off. The Canadians looking to kill this penalty. They have, um, well... One and a quarter minutes, I guess, to hold out against our power play. We've got the big guns on. Although, actually, we are playing our second line right now. But I'm looking for them to make it happen as the effort comes in. And I think that was someone trying to deflect it there for us. So, I asked you guys in the first episode, I talked about deflections. I didn't know this, but deflections in hockey are an aggressive thing. Where it's um, when you shoot from range, your attackers will try and get something on the puck to divert it and kind of deflect it into the goal. Uh, to stop the keeper making a save. So deflections in terms of as, as an attribute is actually just trying to get something on the puck as it's going towards the goal that you're shooting towards. But anyway, we are two two points to the good here. I can't remember if I finished my, my sentence talking about how I was thinking about doing the key and extended highlights, but I'm thinking I'll change it to extended whenever there's one goal between the two teams. And for the rest of it, we will go with it set up to key. Uh, I think we'll stay with extended for this one game, but you guys can let me know. Because right now we're up to 12 minutes. I'm going to probably only do one game an episode. You guys, if you're familiar with my football manager format, will be aware that I kind of skip between certain games and fill you in on what's been going on. With this, I've been trying to keep the episodes fairly kind of frequent to begin with. So you guys can kind of get a fully kind of full feel for the team, but also get a full feel for how I'm adapting and learning the sport and uh, kind of the game. And... Well, the Canadians were a long shot there. It was uh, Beaulieu, I guess, with the goal. His first of the season. This is, of course, the first game. And now it is a one-goal game. We're doing okay. I, I'm, and everyone slated me picking the Toronto Maple Leafs. I was told that this would be a rebuild job. And it probably is. We're probably going to be slogging it out for a few years yet. We have got two first-round picks this coming summer, though, in the draft, which I'm looking forward to getting my hands on as part of a previous deal. But, um, yeah, I, I don't really know what to expect this year. If we can get playoffs, that would be incredible. But I feel like that's quite ambitious, even though that's the board's expectations. But we'll see how we get on here. Slashing committed. Who was that committed by? I didn't see it. Oh, Booth says. It's clever, that, isn't it? So we are down a man. We need to kill this play. We need to... Do what we can whilst we're on this penalty. Canadian's going to have two minutes to try and get the biscuit in the basket. <laughs> and they almost do. Bernier, oh, Bernier with a great save there. So if you don't know, with the power play, basically whenever a player's sin binned, it's usually between two to five minutes. Sometimes you can get a ten-minute penalty. During that time, obviously, you're down a man. If you then concede, the player who's in the sim bin is allowed back on. So as you can see, we have killed that penalty. That means that we saw out the two minutes with less men without going a goal down. And now, oh, Brewer cross-checking. And now we have to kill another penalty. Well, bloody brilliant. Here at the Air Canada Centre in Toronto, can we get a win against the Canadians? We've given away a few too many penalties for my liking in this, the um, the final period. And they're on the attack here, Canadians. 90 seconds left of this penalty. That's a long shot, and it's saved. And we deal with it. But they're on the attack again. This 
could be a break, although Bernier just going to sit on the puck, get, concede the face-off, and we deal with it. We deal with it, and the power play is over for the Canadians. Now can we attack? Can we work some magic? No, 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 we can't. Although there's now a lot of players in the sin bin. It's currently a... What is this? This I feel like... Why why have they got two players there? Someone's going to be able to answer this, but I've got one player in the sim bin. They've got two, but they've still got four players outfield or out on rink. Answers on a postcard. I think, actually, if one team's down, then they, it's always played as a 4v4 rather than reducing the number of players on the ice. Although, right now, they are just taking the Michael. They've, they've got three players on the sim bin, and they're, they're just enjoying it. So I believe if we hadn't given away our penalty, then it would be a 3v5 at this point. But because we've had a player put in the sin bin too, um, they can only go down to four men. So that's why they have the same amount of men. Although we're on the attack here. Go on, my son. Oh, dear. That was sort of uh, Reim Reimsdijk with the F. And he's got another chance at the left winger. Can he cut inside? That's a long-range effort. And the rebound is saved again. I'll tell you what. Price is doing a job here. For Montreal, we've had 46 shots. They've blocked 30 of them. We've only converted one of eight power plays, though. That's pretty poor. That's something maybe to look at, although we're on the attack here. And that's another save. Price is having the game of his life. I know when I was um, first starting with hockey and I introduced this, let's play loads of people were telling me about the fact that goalkeepers in this sport can single-handedly win, win you games. Well, I hope that's not going to be the case for the Canadians here, but if they have someone to thank right now, it's going to be Price. We are absolutely bombarding the net. We have a face-off here. Can Bozak win it for us? He can. We have an effort. It's saved again. Another face-off. Was that Fowler knocking it out wide? It was. Nice play around the net. Can we get it in? No, we can't. Price holds on to it again. This is getting slightly ludicrous at this point. I should point out, obviously, this is the first game I've ever live comped. So if there's anything you'd change format-wise, let me know. But also let me know if, as you watch this, there's stuff that's glaring the obvious or potential tactical changes I could have made in this game because that's the only way I'm going to learn, basically, if there's... You know, maybe I should have changed my offensive line setup to maybe only use the front three lines, or if, you know, if, the, if there's something as simple as that, just let me know of it. But looking at it here, two minutes left on the clock. I want a win to start my EHM and hockey experience here on this channel. This is the first game, boys. People had us beaten today against the Canadians. They laughed at us. We have a four-minute power play that is going to take us to the end of the game. We surely need to win this they're down a man they're going to be down a man to the end if we were to lose this somehow it'd be incredible just a, a little kind of I guess bit of info for you guys that um, in hockey you don't get draws it goes to a 5 minute overtime of golden goal essentially next goal wins and if the scores are still level it goes to a shootout which involves dribbling from the halfway line and only moving forward to try and put the puck in the goal in a 1v1 situation between the kind of shooter and the, the goaltender. So um, it's best of three in that as well. I don't know if I said that, but that's how that gets decided. I believe it's two points for a win as Kadri scores to make it 5-3. And we should be home and dry now with a minute left because, well... There's still the power play going on. I guess that's because it wasn't a minor penalty that was given. But I believe it's two points for a win and one point if you lose after overtime. Or it might be during overtime you get one point and you get zero points for a loss. If that's incorrect, let me know. That's what I've kind of deduced, I guess, from watching the game and playing it a little bit. Um... You know, in a previous save that I did to get a feel for the game. But with 40 seconds left, we are looking strong here. And we're on the attack again. I guess at this point the Canadians are probably playing fairly offensive. Because they do need two goals despite the power play. So that might open up opportunities for us. But we're 5-3 up, boys. We are loving it. We're doing well here at the Air Canada Centre. And with 54 shots on the board, we are dominating. We've given away... Less penalties. Those that we have given away, we've killed off. I feel like I'm some kind of tactical genius. In reality, this is completely beginner's luck. 
but I am not going to complain one little bit about this because I would I didn't think I'd get a win. Won all four games in preseason, put it down to beginner's luck. But um, if we can continue this in the league, I know we're at home here, but I'd I'd love it. I'd love it. Seven seconds. It's done. We are we are winning. Rhymes Dyke, Bozart, Castle, Fowler, Fenough, Bernier. Ah, our starting line here to kill off the game. It's going to be game set a match. This is not tennis. This is hockey. But we've won. Take a bow, boys. They had us beaten today, but we, the Leafs, have shown the Canadians what we are all about here in this battle of the Canadian teams. I don't know what the technical name for this derby is. I know it has a name, but that doesn't matter at this point. I am buzzing, looking at it. Shot chart. We were shooting from everywhere, but that's kind of our game plan. Uh, play by play. If we go to... Uh, not that. Box score, you can see how the goals went. So we went 2-0 up. It went 2-1. We went 3-1 three three up. It went 3-2. We went 4-2 up. It went 4-3. But Kadri at the end with a decent goal. I assume first assist means the player who immediately passed it to the scorer and second assist is the player who passed it to the person who passed it to the scorer. It would make sense. So Fowler getting involved, which is good to see. But what a start. What a start to our little kind of career. So one thing I did want to ask just to end up this episode, besides the format questions, which still kind of hangs, you know, if you want to suggest how I can do it, let me know. But one thing I actually wanted to discuss was, if I just go to all contracted. So, of course, I have Nylander here, who's a really good talent. Would it be a stupid decision? I know he's not very good but w have I got much to lose considering that according to you guys at least my expectations should be very low to kind of draft this guy up to my first team and play him potentially in my fourth line to get in time on the ice for his development or would it be better served in playing in the Marlies and the same goes for kind of other players so I know there's players like I think Connor Brown's a player who at the moment in real life has been bigged up a lot and you know there, there's a lot of questions about whether or not he should be called up to the Leafs kind of I guess roster to play some games in the NHL to close off the season is that something I should be looking to do potentially or should I really just look to play them um, or let them be play with the Marlies to get kind of full development I guess I'd be interested to know your thoughts on that anyway uh, I'm going to wrap things up here I'm going to continue to pursue improving my roster I'm not even sure if there's like a transfer window of sorts with the NHL if people want to let me know when I can do trades between and if there's any restrictions I should know of that'd be greatly appreciated hopefully you've enjoyed this episode it was the first live con for you guys who had never seen hockey before I hope you could follow along uh, with the aid of the video that I put in the description and yeah uh, thank you for watching if you've enjoyed the video smash the like button you guys have been incredible so far on this series loads of new subscribers who have come over to support this series a lot of people who are a lot more well versed with hockey than I and you guys have been amazing with your support kind of just general feedback's been great and uh, hopefully this is going to be a long running series so other than that what a win what a result hopefully I'll see you guys on the next one it is me Jack and I'll talk to you guys in a bit